So let's say you've just eaten a foreign plant. Inside of that plant, there's going to be thousands of biomolecules. There's going to be thousands of these foreign xenobiotic biomolecules. So how does our body get rid of and excrete these foreign biomolecules? We know they can't just live in our bloodstream forever. We need to get rid of them. We need to excrete them out of our bodies. So how do we do this? Well, if the biomolecule happens to be polar, for example, if it happens to have a permanent charge or if it just happens to be polar in general, we know it can dissolve in the bloodstream. And if it can dissolve in the bloodstream, it can be filtered out of our glomeruli and therefore excreted in our kidneys. So that's just something you need to be familiar with. If it's a polar, small and polar molecule, it can simply just be filtered out of our glomeruli and be excreted through our kidneys. However, what if the foreign biomolecule happens to be nonpolar? Well, if it's nonpolar, it's going to aggregate. It's going to aggregate through the hydrophobic effect with other nonpolar molecules, and it's going to form these large aggregates that cannot be filtered out in our glomeruli. So if they can't be filtered out and, and then therefore excreted through our kidneys, how do we get rid of these nonpolar foreign xenobiotic biomolecules? Well, it's our liver's job. So again, this represents the liver, but let's say this is just a normal liver hepatocyte. So it's the liver's job to get rid of these nonpolar biomolecules. So essentially what these nonpolar biomolecules will do is they'll enter the liver. We know they're nonpolar, so they can simply cross the plasma membrane and they'll enter the liver. And in the liver, in the endoplasmic reticulum, they have a lot of these neat enzymes referred to as cytochrome P450 enzymes. So essentially what these enzymes do is they take this nonpolar biomolecule and they essentially react with it, adding a hydroxyl group or some other reactive polar uh, functional group. And commonly, it's going to be a hydroxyl group. So we take the nonpolar foreign molecule, it enters into our liver, and then we essentially hydroxylate it. These enzymes will hydroxylate it, adding this polar reactive functional group. So now that we've added this polar functional reactive group, we can essentially now essentially tag it. We can, for example, we could add a sulfate molecule. We can add a sulfate molecule to this, this reactive hydroxyl. And when we, we've done that, we've essentially tagged this nonpolar biomolecule with the sulfate group. And notice this sulfate is very polar. It has a formal negative charge, a formal charge of negative one. And then again, it, this is a polar functional group. So we have essentially taken this nonpolar foreign biomolecule and through these processes, we've made it more polar. Now it's more polar. And not just that, we've tagged it with one of these sulfate groups. So now what happens? Well, now it's polar. So now that it's polar, we have transporters in our hepatocytes that can recognize these tags and transport it into our bloodstream. Now that it's in our bloodstream, it's polar. So it can dissolve in the bloodstream. And now that it can dissolve in the bloodstream, it can be filtered out in our glomeruli. And not just that, we can go a step further. We essentially have these transporters in, in, our, in our nephrons. In our distal tubules, we have these transporters that recognize this tag. They recognize molecules with these sulfate tags. So when this molecule enters and gets near in the bloodstream near, near these transporters, these transporters are going to latch onto it and throw it into our tubules. And once it's thrown in our tubules, it'll get excreted through our, through our urinary system and through, through our urine. So that's pretty neat. That's the way we can take a foreign biomolecule, essentially make it polar so it can dissolve in our bloodstream so we can excrete it and also so these transporters can recognize and get rid of it. But we know if we eat a foreign plant or just, just any, any uh, plant or whatever, there's going to be thousands of these foreign biomolecules. So how can we in a very non-specific way take all these different potential foreign nonpolar biomolecules and get rid of them? Well, again, it's the same general process. They'll enter inside of our hepatocytes in our liver. And then we have lots of different types of enzymes. So, for example, we also have certain enzymes that can react with this nonpolar biomolecule and maybe adding one of these sulfur hydro hydro groups. So, again, we've taken this nonpolar biomolecule and we've essentially made it a little more polar by adding this functional group that's also reactive. This is a reactive functional group. And now that we've done that, now we can essentially tag it with one of these polar molecules. For example, this is glucuronic acid, which we can see is extremely polar. So essentially, we tag this nonpolar foreign xenobiotic by first adding the sulfur hydrol. Now we tag it with this glucuronic acid. And when we do that, now we've made this molecule very polar. Now it's extremely polar.
Now that it's very polar again, we have transporters that recognize it and transport it into our bloodstream. And again, now that it's in our bloodstream and it's polar, we know it can simply dissolve, it can solvate in our, in our blood and it can be filtered out in our glomeruli. And not just that, also if it remains in the bloodstream, in, in the, this blood, we know these transporters can recognize this, this tag, this glucuronic acid uh, tag. So, so, so it recognizes it, then essentially takes this molecule and throws it into the tubule. And when it throws it in the tubule, now can be excreted through our urine. And not just that, we can also go a step further. The anatomy is, is a little off right here, but the point is, in our liver, we have this biliary tree. So this biliary tree also has these transporters and can recognize these, these, these nonpolar uh, xenobiotic foreign molecules. As long as we can take these nonpolar foreign molecules and we can add this tag to it, now these transporters recognize that tag, so they latch on that tag and they throw this molecule into the biliary tree. Well, it'll now enter into our small intestines where we can excrete it in our feces. So this is a way we can take thousands of different foreign biomolecules and we can go through the same general process. And in fact, these processes have steps. So this is referred to as phase one metabolism. So again, phase one is when we take this nonpolar biomolecule and we add this reactive group, for example, maybe a hydroxyl group or a sulfur hydryl group. But again, that's phase one. Then phase two is when we tag it with some kind of very polar functional group, some kind of very polar molecule. So that's phase two. Now, once, once we've tagged this nonpolar molecule with, with, this, with this very polar functional group, phase three is when these transporters latch onto it to excrete it out of our bodies. So again, these are three general phases of essentially excretion, the way we take these, these foreign molecules to essentially excrete them out of our bodies. So now let, let's, let's do another example. So let's say we have two people. Let's say we have John, and this is John's body and John's physiology. And let's say we have Jay. So John and Jay, they have different genetics. So because they have different genetics, they have different genes. So therefore, they're going to have different detox enzymes. They're going to have different types and slightly different alleles of, of, of these detox enzymes. So therefore, because they have different alleles of these detox enzymes, they're going to have different rates of metabolism. They're going to have different efficiencies of, of excretion. So again, let's say John and Jay both took the same drug. Let's say this, it's not really a drug, but let's say they just took this, this, this general molecule, this general drug, and let's say they both took the exact same dosage. They both took the exact same dosage. But let's say John, for whatever reason, John's, uh, th these, these detox enzymes are very efficient. He happened to inherit alleles that encode very efficient detox enzymes, while Jay happened to have alleles that created very sluggish detox enzymes. So what's going to happen? Well, if John has alleles that create very efficient detox enzymes, it's going to very quickly detox this, this, this drug. So again, we know first is phase one when we add this polar reactive group. Then it's phase two when we, when we tag it with this polar functional group. And then we know phase three is when we use transporters to excrete it out of our bodies. But again, if John has, has enzymes that, that make this process very efficient, then what's going to happen in a couple hours? Well, in a couple hours, John is going to greatly excrete these biomolecules. It's going to greatly excrete these foreign molecules because, again, it's going to take those foreign molecules and very efficiently tag them and go through this process so now we can very efficiently excrete it out of our body. John can very efficiently excrete it out of his body. However, if Jay has very sluggish detox enzymes, then Jay is going to do this process very slowly. So if it's excreting the molecules very slowly, there's going to be a lot more in his bloodstream. So therefore, and then again, so now we maybe wait a couple more hours. And then again, because Jay, John was so efficient at this excretion process, he's going to very quickly completely get rid of his, his body of, of this molecule. However, John, Jay, who had very sluggish enzymes, uh, detox enzymes is going to be is is not going to be efficient at this process. So Jay is still going to have high amounts of this molecule in his bloodstream. So there are very important implications. For example, if we had John and Jay, who would require a higher dose to to allow this drug to have a good effect? Well, John would require a really strong dose because John very quickly excretes it out of his body, and we know we need this molecule to be in the bloodstream for it to exert its effect.
So J requires very little because J excretes it very slowly. So it lasts in his bloodstream for a long time. So it has a very strong effect. However, John very quickly excretes it out of his body. So if John is very quickly excreting it out of his body, John is going to need a larger dose because even if we give John a very large dose, he's going to very quickly excrete it out of his body because he happened to inherit alleles that encode these detox enzymes that are very efficient.